Hello from Denver, Colorado. This is Carrie Norris, and I'm the host for today's show, which is being recorded live from the Legal Shield Elevate Attorney Conference. Joining me this morning, I have Oklahoma Insurance Commissioner Glenn Mulready. Welcome to the show, Commissioner. Thank you. Good to be here. I'm glad to have you, and we're excited that you're here with us. So tell me a little bit first about you and uh, why you are in your role that you're in today, and a little bit about your family. Yeah, sure. Who's Glenn? Who's Glenn? <laughs> well, yeah. uh, well, from a uh, career standpoint, I've been in the insurance business for 35 years as an independent agent broker in Massachusetts for 12 years and relocated to Oklahoma where my wife is from. Then was on the insurance company side, served as an executive uh, with a couple of Oklahoma's largest health insurers. And then 10 years after that, back on the independent agent, self-employed, uh, but in employee benefits uh, for, for 10 years. And then um, towards the end of that time frame, uh, I ran for state representative. And so served in the Oklahoma House of Representatives for eight years. Where I sort of, uh, I don't know, inadvertently became the insurance guy at the Capitol and so uh, was involved in anything to do with insurance uh, that was going on at the Capitol, chair of the insurance committee, and then uh, last couple of years was majority uh, floor leader. And so that's kind of career-wise. Um, I just mentioned I grew up in Massachusetts, one of seven kids. And, one of seven? Uh, God bless your mother. Yeah, yeah. Seven kids in 10 years. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, and in fact, we'll be up there visiting next week. So uh, we, we take our boys up and we try to get up there once each summer. But then I met my wife. Uh, she's from Oklahoma and uh, was living in Massachusetts uh, when she was working with Delta Airlines. And then we got married. We lived up there for about eight years and then uh, relocated to Oklahoma due to her, her dad's health, which wasn't good. And I just kind of made a big life decision. And I sold my share of an agency out and we started over back in 96 in, in Oklahoma. All right. So I, I heard you kind of casually mention your boys. Um, yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. I know you have, like your mother, a lot of children uh, yeah. and, and all boys. Is that correct? Yeah. Funny personal story and not to share too much information. But we had eight, uh, uh, 12 years. We couldn't have kids. And so uh, then suddenly out of the blue, we could. I mean, we were doing nothing else different or intervention, but uh, we, I like to joke that we were pregnant and we were old. So uh, we basically cranked out three boys. Uh, so we have a son, 19, 17, 16. So uh, lots of energy at our house. And, uh, you know, my wife used to say in the early years, you know, that if, if there wasn't blood, then we hadn't, the day wasn't through yet. You know, so three I, boys. I, keeps I her can hopping. only imagine all those dirty socks, <laughs> stinky gym bags, you know, footballs, basketballs, yeah. everything lying around. So um, I know it has to be fun and great work. So yeah. uh, I, I'm proud of you guys for doing that. So. You talked a little bit about your time in the Oklahoma House of Representatives. Um, and then, so what made you make the switch into statewide public office, particularly on the insurance side? Yeah, so we have term limits in Oklahoma. And so uh, statewide elected officials can serve for a maximum of eight years, two four-year terms. Our current insurance commissioner uh, at that time, who I worked very closely with, uh, just again with all that insurance legislation and trying to improve the insurance business climate in Oklahoma, um, he was going to be done due to term limits. Um, again, I had served eight years in the House, uh, but as a representative, you're allowed to serve 12 years, so I, I, I could have served longer, but I just thought it was a great opportunity to sort of put my 35 years of insurance experience and my eight years in the legislature, kind of put that to work serving sort of a greater area in uh, an industry that I know well. And so um, we, uh, we sure talked about it and prayed about it a lot because it's quite a family commitment. Uh, and, and including the boys and what that would mean to us. And so uh, we made a decision to jump in that race. And so we, we spent about, I guess, about a year and a half, 18 months out campaigning and running around our state. And it's a lot of work when you're just kind of getting around and getting, getting your message out there. And so um, things went very well. So here we are. Well, and I just want to say thank you for your service. Anyone who's willing to make that commitment and put themselves out in front of the public um, and serve for the greater good, we appreciate you and applaud you for that. So, yeah, thanks. Um, so I know Oklahoma's had a, a rough few weeks uh, weather-wise. Not necessarily unusual for people who are from Oklahoma uh, to have springtime weather, but tell me a little bit about what's been going on and particularly the flooding and the yeah. rain and what you're seeing as insurance commissioner. Um, what, what, what's next? It has been a tough, I don't know, 30 days for Oklahoma. But I'll back up a little bit from that, Carrie, to say that, uh, you know, back in mid-April, first 
week of April, we launched a campaign uh, to try to uh, encourage Oklahomans uh, to get ready because, as you just mentioned, uh, you know May is storm season for Oklahoma, and so uh, we um, sort of sort of tongue in cheek. The campaign was Mulready says get ready. And uh, we encourage folks to pledge to have an emergency plan in place for their house and for their business, to do a home inventory. In other words, you're, you're photographing or videotaping uh, your personal possessions. Um, just some, some real basic, uh, basic things, having lists of your doctors and prescriptions and that sort of thing. And um, so the timeliness of that was, was great. Uh, you know, uh, we, so we, we launched that campaign along with Oklahoma Emergency Management and so that was in April, but uh, yeah, in May we, you know, we had a couple of our tornadoes, which uh, aren't unusual. Uh, we had one F3 hit El Reno, it uh, did some serious damage to a couple of car dealerships and uh, and a motel, and and in fact, two people were killed, unfortunately, in that uh, that incident. The other tornadoes we've had have been um, really quite small, uh, F zeros or F F1, some in the Tulsa area, the Pulpa area. But what was unusual this year was the flooding. So just due to the crazy amount of rain that was received uh, in our area, as well as north of us that flows through the Arkansas River, uh, we saw unprecedented uh, flooding. And um, the difficult part of that has been that tornado damage, most folks are insured, right? 90% of the damage that gets done, they've got insurance. And so their path to financial recovery is a little quicker and easier. But when it comes to the flood... I don't know exactly, but 90% of those folks don't have insurance. And so they have a very difficult, uh, slow and painful process of cleanup and then financial recovery from that. So we, uh, we almost immediately changed up our website and had a, you know, storm vic- 2019 storm victims click here and had a bunch of resources and trying to just drive folks uh, there to what to do with, with the flood and, and how to file a claim. And we have a consumer assistance line. So we've been quite busy. And now you know, a, a month into some of that, we've got these uh, multiple agency resource center events. So what they do is pull together a bunch of agencies, the Red Cross and, uh, and, and FEMA and some of these others. And so we've had a table at those and just helping answer folks' questions and, and guide them through that. So we, we've got a great team. I think this weekend, we'll have people out at those MARC events, uh, you know, on a Saturday and a Sunday, uh, out in, all over the state, um, helping folks, uh, helping consumers as they try to recover uh, from all that. I might add, too, one, another step that we took was as soon as that all happened, I issued a bulletin which um, basically said that no insurance company can cancel or non-renew an insurance policy for the next 30 days. And uh, the reason for that was you got, I realized there's a lot of folks out of their house. They're not getting their mail. Can the post office even get to deliver the mail to them? And so we didn't want folks being left without whether that's car insurance or health insurance or homeowner's insurance. But uh, we did put that bulletin out and, and kind of put a hard stop on that. Now, that's getting ready to expire, but we just wanted to give folks um, sort of a grace period, if you will, to, to recover and get an address and start receiving mail and being more in the normal routine. Well, I think it's important what you point out that there's, um, and what you're doing with your team is putting resources and people in place to be a help and to be out there touching people and making their lives a little easier in a difficult time. And, you know, we're, we're at a legal conference um, and, you know, lawyers are a great asset to that. And I know you have those on your team that do some of that. Um, and I know all the people in the state of Oklahoma who are affected by the storms and the flooding really appreciate just knowing where to turn and yeah. having a familiar face. And, and that's yeah. what you're it, able to do. It, in fact, even some of the, um, you know, the FEMA information and some of that stuff, you know, some folks encouraged me not to get engaged in that because that isn't insurance. It really doesn't flow through our department. My point and the reason why we did get involved in that was just that folks are looking for help. They're looking for information. We can get that information and pass that on to them and, and clarify. The other discouraging thing through this process has just been the just misinformation when it comes to flood insurance, when it comes to FEMA help and how that all works. So we're, we're going to launch pretty quickly here a camp, sort of an education campaign, some public service announcements, potentially and other things to educate folks about flood insurance. You know, again, it's just so discouraging to, you know, meet with a, an older couple who's trying to clean out their house and they have no flood insurance. They're 70 years old. How do they sort of start over and what does that look like? And so, you know, when you encounter some 
some folks like that, it, it affects you. And so um, it affected me deeply. And, and uh, I, I want to try to make a difference there and educate folks and, you know, that anybody can buy flood insurance. It doesn't matter whether you're in the floodplain or out of the floodplain. Uh, and, you know, it's not that expensive. I think there was sort of a, some misinformation out there about how the cost of that. And so we want to try to increase the folks that are purchasing flood insurance so that should this happen again, they've got a little easier path to recovery. So. Well, and I have no doubt that if anyone can make that happen and not only do the education, but bring the resources and the opportunities for people to buy more protection and have more help that you'll, you and your team will be able to do that. So yeah. I know yeah. that you're always forward thinking um, and looking at new opportunities. I know you were recently in the United Kingdom um, yeah. and you're looking at bringing a new project to Oklahoma, kind of one of the first in the country. So if you would tell us a little bit about that and what you're doing and uh, what that's going to mean for you and your team and more importantly, the people that you serve. Yeah. So we really are are on the cutting edge of some things. And, uh, and I know sometimes, unfortunately, the terms Oklahoma and cutting edge may not naturally go together for some folks, but indeed they, they are in this situation. And so a few years ago, uh, when I was in the legislature, I started down a path. I learned of something, and, uh, and, and Senator Sparks, who is the minority leader in the Senate, uh, he and I worked on a piece of legislation to allow insurance business transfers. Well, right out of the gates, there were um, legal questions. There were concerns from some um, insurance companies. Wait, wait, what are you doing? So we hit we hit pause, as I like to say. We did an interim study and and really just took that time to educate those folks on what it was and what it wasn't. So then the year after that, we ran that through the legislature and got that approved. Well, what it's modeled after is in in the UK they have what they call mo- Part Seven transfers. And so basically what that does is it allows an insurance company to buy a block of business from another insurance company. And we, we really modeled it after that. There's a three-step process is sort of what I like to say, that you've got an independent expert who does a whole analysis of it and submits a report, has to be approved by them or recommended by them. And then the insurance commissioner's office has to uh, approve that. And then from there, it goes to district court. And so... As you can imagine, in a lot of that process, we've got a number of attorneys involved uh, as well, and so it needs to be approved by the district court. And the whole part of this is that prior to this, if you wanted to do something like that, you had to get every policyholder to approve that. Wow, well, that would be really hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> hard, or the word is impossible, you know, to get everybody to say, okay. But, but that three-step process is in place to make sure that no policyholder is materially disadvantaged or, or impacted by that. That's really the sole job of that process, is to make sure I mean, no policyholder is worse off than they would have been with the previous company. And it requires that every policyholder is notified, as well as uh, other uh, interested parties like guarantee associations and other state regulators, other commissioners around the country. And then that those folks can have their day in court, if you will. I mean, they're, they, they are notified, and then they have an opportunity to be heard. And so those are key components of it. Um, what I've said is that we're really not, we're not plowing new ground. This has been done in the United Kingdom and UK for 20 years, for a couple of decades. They've done 280 transactions without a single failure. I mean, I think concern sometimes is w- with this. Uh, that folks don't know about it, think, oh, it's going to be a dumping ground or something for for bad business. But that's not the case at all. The intent is I may have a block of business that we're no longer selling and we're never going to sell again, but we've got to continue the runoff of that business and the liabilities incurred where there may be a company who specializes in that, and that's what they do. And so it allows company A there to sell that off to someone else to sort of reactivate their capital in areas of the business that um, that they are interested in and where they are going. And so it's worked very well in the UK. Again, 280-something transactions with no failures. But uh, we are right in the middle of our first transaction. So it's we have the independent expert report. We're in the middle of reviewing it. And, uh, and then it will go on to the, to the court. Uh, but if we, we are hopeful we'll complete that by the end of this year that that will close that. And and, uh, when we do, that'll be the first time in the history of of our country that there has been one of those done uh, in the U.S. And um, on the trip that you just mentioned, I I met with a number of other companies, and we have another company that has applied now to to establish themselves in Oklahoma and move forward with our second insurance business transfers that hopefully will be in the works soon. What I like about this is that it 
you're speaking not only as a regulator or an elected official, but you're speaking really as a business person and what that's going to mean to the state of Oklahoma and to businesses in Oklahoma and to lawyers in Oklahoma and all the folks that are involved. And that's a great vision. I, and I also heard you say that you and Senator Sparks started this years ago. So it yep. wasn't like you thought this was going to be a quick, easy solution. You knew it was a, a visionary project. And so I like that, adding together both a vision as well as a business component. Yeah. Um, and I think that's unusual, possibly, in your role. Th- though I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that, uh, you know, the pushback initially was, uh, I always like to think any of my dear ideas are going to just sail through, right? But uh, we, we got some pushback. But I think the smart thing that we did is just, we, we said time out. And we weren't going to try to ramrod this through without educating folks, realize there was a need to educate them on exactly what this was. And um, to my reference earlier of plowing new ground, a lot of folks think, is this some crazy new idea that we're doing? And uh, my point is, it's it's a new idea for the U.S., but it's not a, a, a new idea. And there's a lot of conversation happening here in our country. Uh, Rhode Island has a similar statute. Theirs is a little bit more limited than ours. They, they will only do property and casualty and only commercial business. We will do life business um, and personal lines, too, if they'd like. But... Um, but there are a number of other states that have done division statutes, which would allow a company sort of to divide and then sell off a whole company. But so in that whole sort of restructuring arena, there's a lot, a uh, lot going on. Well, I, I applaud you for not only the vision, but the the business acumen and the integrity to put it together and being the first in the country to be a leader. Um, that that takes a lot of initiative and a lot of courage, and I applaud you for that. Yeah. Um, well, and I can tell you that having just returned from last week that trip. There's a lot of uh, excitement and energy in the UK for this um, with some large multinational companies. Uh, I think I heard the quote a couple times that hopefully our, I don't know, being on the tip of the spear of that will help break up the logjam of the US that there's, um, there's an estimated $365 billion wow. of runoff business. In other words, business that they're, just, they're not doing anything else with that could potentially, so it's a big potential market. And uh, you know, if you think about I don't know, sort of refreshed capital being tossed back in there. It's, right. it's, it's exciting. So there, what I learned over there is there's a lot of eyes on Oklahoma right now internationally because of this. So that, That's fantastic. And I, like you, am from Oklahoma. So anytime we can get attention in a positive way, <laughs> we're excited about that. So I appreciate you for leading that effort and being creative and being innovative. Um, that's what you know, we all like to talk about, yeah. uh, both in business and in law and uh, government. Um, we need creative, innovative thinkers. So thank you for that. So sure. as, as we begin to wrap up here, I told you I would have one trick question. Okay. But I gave you a heads up. <laughs> so just I just have to ask this. I, I consider myself a bookie, um, whether I'm listening or reading or whatever it might be. So as far as reading books, a bookie, not a... Not, oh, not, yes. Not a, <laughs> I, yeah, not that kind of bookie. The actual reading kind, the This is a legal kind. show. We want to make That's sure right. it's clear. That's right. It's a legal show, so <laughs> the full legal kind. So uh, what was the last book you read, um, and what did you think about it? So I will... Uh, I, it might be best just sort of backtrack. I'm right in the middle of uh, Traction, a, a business book, and I'm having my executive team uh, go through that and, and, and exercise. We're going to... Um, use that to kind of set our goals and our vision uh, for the department, uh, which is exciting. It's pretty nice to do that right out of the gates. I just took office a few months ago from, in January. So, And I um, love that you're bringing business-minded concepts to government yeah. so that they, they, it runs efficiently and effectively. And I think your team's going to love that. That's a, that's a book and a series that the executive team that I'm involved in, that Legal Shield has done. So yeah. I applaud you. That's going to be a great one. You guys are really going to get a lot out of it. Good. And so um, I try to cycle through books, and I have three categories, sort of spiritual, uh, novel, or fiction, or, and, uh, and then business, so that I'm not usually reading two business books or three business books in a row or three. But I read um, the most recent books I've read were Killing England, which was one of um, Bill O'Reilly's other books. I've kind of read all of those, which have just been, I guess, biographies, you know, but I've, I've really enjoyed those. But I, I did read that. And then um, uh, on that spiritual side, I read uh, Everybody Always. Uh, Bob Goff is a gentleman. He's an attorney, actually. I believe he wrote Love Does. He do- did, yes. And so that, this is the follow-up book to Love Does. And just the title alone is, I think the thought is, that's what we should be doing, loving everybody always. So anyways, I love him and uh, have read both of those books. But, uh, and then, I guess previous to that, I read uh, is it K- Killers of the Flower Moon. 
a great book about Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah, it is. And in fact, on, on the airplane out here, I saw that they were they were scouting out some potential. I think it's Martin Scorsese, maybe, who's scouting yeah, out. There's some... going to be a large movie production coming yeah. to Oklahoma to to do that. Yeah, fascinating story, uh, but. So and is it, yeah, if people don't know the history of Oklahoma, uh, that's a great place to start and learn a little bit. Um, probably not the brightest spot in Oklahoma yeah, I was history. I just going to say, but, a dark uh, time in Osage it's County. It's a dark time in Osage County, but it's, for people that are on the outside, it's a fascinating read to learn and study. Yeah. So. Well, and having lived there for 20 years, it was fascinating and eye-opening for me. I didn't know that history. So, very cool read. Yeah. Well, Commissioner, I want to say thank you so much for your time today. We're reaching the end of our time together. I can't say thank you enough for joining us, and thank you for all that you do <laughs> as the Oklahoma Insurance Commissioner, um, helping and supporting and working with people of your great state and what goes on there. And so from Legal Talk Network, Legal Shields Elevate Conference, we'll be signing off, and thank you so much, Commissioner. Thank you for having me. It's been great. If you'd like more information about what you've heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS, find us on Twitter and Facebook, or download our free Legal Talk Network app in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.